In a recent Instagram post, Mesa Boogie announced its sale to the controversial guitar giant Gibson Guitars. So is this the end of the road for Mesa Boogie? We want you to know that you've been warned. What's up guys, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Taylor and I wanna hear your thoughts on this subject. Do you think it's a good thing that Mesa Boogie sold to Gibson or do you think it's a horrifying thing? Let me know down in the comments below. While Gibson is one of the most celebrated guitar brands of all time in recent years, They've taken some heat. Whether it's broken headstocks, the willful destruction of property, or the threat to sue any manufacturer that produces a guitar that looks anything like a Gibson, I think it's safe to say that Gibson has been a household name for the last three years for all of the wrong reasons. And while I know and fully acknowledge that the Gibson Les Paul is a classic guitar, let's face it, Gibson hasn't really been known for making guitars in the last few years. As a matter of fact, in 2018, they had to file Chapter 11 bankruptcy to save themselves from an estimated 100 to 500 million dollars in debt that they had accumulated from purchasing brands like Philips. Yeah, you remember Philips, right? They used to make really good DVD players. And rebranding itself as an electronic lifestyle brand. I mean, what were they thinking, right? And I can just picture the CEO at the time, Henry, I can't pronounce your last name, saying something like, you know guys, guitars are really cool, but you know where the future is? DVD players. We should shift our focus to TVs. Now, since its bankruptcy, Gibson has seen a return to focusing on its roots, which is manufacturing guitars, as well as suing the pants off anyone that makes a guitar shape resembling a Gibson guitar. So what does this mean for Mesa Boogie? Well, there are a couple things that come to mind. Mesa is set to continue to manufacture and sell amplifiers under its own name, meaning that you're not gonna see a Gibson dual rectifier anytime soon. Also, it seems as though Gibson's primary interest in acquiring Mesa Boogie is to dip its toes into the amplifier waters, effectively making making Mesa Boogie Gibson's own custom shop, so to speak. Another major consideration is that Gibson is under new management. Former Levi's CEO James Curley took over the company in 2019. Now, while all of these things seem to point in the favor of Gibson returning to form, they're all so recent that it's really hard to say what direction this company is gonna take in the future. And I think one of the major hurdles that Gibson is gonna have to overcome is the negativity associated with their brand. Like it or not, a huge segment of the guitar community now associates Gibson with the play authentic memes that were circulating the internet in 2019. And I don't think that's a small thing that can be understated because when you lose the confidence of your consumers, that brand damage is really difficult to come back from. And I think Gibson's fully aware of this because shortly after the video was posted with the play authentic threat of litigation, Gibson pulled down that video real quick after an extreme backlash from the guitar community. And the majority of headlines that you see Gibson in these days are negative things like Gibson sues Dean, Gibson sues Luna Guitars. It's really not a good look. Kind of like a fedora. So in the end, is this a bad move for Mesa Boogie? I think it depends on how much control of Mesa Boogie Gibson really wants. But a huge concern that I have is with Gibson's love of litigation, are they gonna start going after amp modeling? The Mesa Boogie dual rectifier is one of the most modeled and copied amps of all time, and I wouldn't be surprised if we saw another play authentic courtroom drama play out, except this time aimed at companies like Fractal and Line 6. We're here to protect our iconic legacy and the designs that we've created over generations. It's very likely that you could see new products from these manufacturers in the future without some of the amps that are so highly regarded in their arsenal. And also, if that happens, that sets a precedent for the whole amp modeling community that could really damage it moving forward. All right, guys, so do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? I'm really interested to hear what your thoughts are on this subject in the comments below. And as always, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.